Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, and if you have ever been confused by bit depth, either in audio, computing, video, color, then I'm gonna break down the bits for you. With so many changes in computing, in color values and new cameras and in computing power and audio, it's really easy to get confused. Is that a 24-bit image or is that an 8-bit image? Image, that's the problem is, is people will say 8-bit or 24-bit image. I'm gonna break this down and talk about bits per channel, bits per pixel, and the uh, sample rate in audio and computing. The first thing is let's look at audio. When you have a real analog waveform in the natural world, it is full of a lot of information. When you want to capture that information into a computer, you have to make choices. And one of those choices is the bit depth. And the bit depth is determined by slicing up the sound waves into smaller segments. If those slices are too large and they're too coarse, then they don't follow the, the exact waveform that they came from. They don't represent that sound. So something originally that was very, very fluid and very smooth and natural and analog ends up being very digital and sometimes harsh and even robotic. It doesn't sound natural at all. Well, the good thing is that if you record with a higher bit depth, then you're going to um, increase the overall fidelity and the overall quality of that audio. So a higher bit depth is definitely going to make that audio sound better. What's a good value? 24 bit across the board um, is great. 32 is okay. I mean, it, it, it's not that much bigger, but um, my general rule is 30, uh, sorry, 24 bit audio. 16 bit audio was CDs, for those too young to remember, those plastic discs. Uh, that was the standard out there, and 16 bit is crap. If somebody gives you 16 bit and you stick it into 24 bit, it doesn't make it 24 bit, doesn't make it sound better, won't, uh, it won't make it uh, any less. But if you have the option when you're making audio, make it at 24 bit. Audition likes to work in 32-bit, so if you're creating stuff in Audition, great, 32-bit is fine, but 24 would be a good solid average. Okay, next up is computing. In computing, we're talking about only two values, 32-bit versus 64-bit computing. What is the difference? Well, first of all, it's speed. 64-bit can handle uh, multiple uh, processors and send a lot more information. And how much faster is it? Well, it's freaking insane. 64-bit computing blows 32-bit out of the water by a huge margin. Next, the data path. How much information can go to that CPU and to the registers? twice as much data. And you combine that with however many uh, cores you have, it's even more amazing. But the last one, probably the most incredible one, is memory. So we have a limit of 32-bit uh, of, of four gigabytes, and with 64-bit um, computing, you've got um, a heck of a lot more. You actually, th there are some systems out there that will ship with a terabyte of memory costs a lot of money, <laughs> but you're not restricted anymore. And, and the, the best part of all of those three is Adobe engineers write their software to take advantage of that. If you just, if you had a 64-bit amazing powerful computer and you run a 32-bit application like uh, Final Cut Pro 7 on it, you have wasted every single bit of computing power on that computer. Doesn't matter how fast it is, a 32-bit uh, program won't take advantage of it. 64-bit uh, programs, um, there's less choices and thought about this on, on the Mac side. Everything's 64-bit, you just run it and you're done with it. On Windows, because there's still a lot of legacy programs, there's still people running XP for crying out loud, uh, you'll see a lot of times the option to install a 32-bit version of something or a 64-bit version. 
Adobe's video applications are all 64-bit only. And recently, things like Photoshop, Illustrator are 64-bit. Are, uh, so you just wanna stay in 64-bit. So across the board makes a huge difference. Now the last one is color bit depth. And this is the one that there's, uh, I think, even more confusion uh, where people aren't really sure, especially with the introduction of new cameras. So let's go look at color bit depth. All right, so we have an image and in that image, there are channels. If we look at the channels, there is a red channel, green channel, blue channel. They actually don't look color. They're made up of several shades of gray. The amount of shades in that image directly affect the quality that that image has. The more shades, the more it's gonna look uh, more accurate to the original. As you reduce the amount of shades, you're going to introduce things like posterization. All right, so let's look at color bit depth and find out what it really means. So there's, we'll start with eight bits per channel. Eight red, eight blue, eight green equals 24 bits per pixel. Each channel gets 256 shades. That's where a lot of people get confused. Is this a 24 bit image or an eight bit image? It's eight bits per channel, which equals a 24 bit uh, per pixel image. Um, so that's where a lot of confusion is. Most people, that's all they'll ever work with in the low end is 8-bit images, 8-bit in Photoshop, you shoot with a DSLR, 8-bit, 8-bit, 8-bit. That's okay, but you're definitely going to find some restrictions, sometimes gradations, skies, or shadows. Uh, you'll find that you'll, the, the image will start to break down. Now, if you just add two more bits, two, so instead of eight per channel, 10 per channel, look at the difference. So we've got Obviously, 10 red, 10 blue, 10 green equals 30 bits, but look at this, 1,024 shades. And if you've been researching cameras and you're looking at, well, eight, 10, eight, is so that much of a difference? Unbelievable difference. You know, 1,024 is, is going to be able to capture all of those gradations and, and, the, and the nuances. It's not the color that's, that's a huge change, it's the small changes from a dark gray to a shadow. How many shades are in there? If you've got fewer gradations, that's where posterization will happen. In the high end, in color, in, in the very bright highlights, how many steps do you have? So let's go look at even more. So if we look at the uh, cameras out there that are shooting in 12-bit, you got 12 bits per channel. All right, so that as we go along here, 12-bit, uh, 12 red, 12 blue, 12 green, 32, holy smokes, 4,096 shades. So. Who has the bits? That's the big question. So let's start with the computing platforms, OS 10, 8-bit. There are promises uh, to go to 10-bit with El Capitan, but no Adobe applications support that yet. 10-bit um, has been on Windows since Windows 7, and HP actually offers some great uh, displays like the Dream Color display with that is 10-bit. Now, of course, Mac users have been getting 10-bit forever. There's professional video systems that are out there. What I'm talking about is the built-in ability to run 10-bit in Mac is not there yet. Uh, so what do professionals do? Well, they stick in an SDI card, either from companies like NVIDIA or Blackmagic or AJA, and they run a separate 10-bit out to a display and they've been getting 10-bit forever, but that's not native in the uh, actual system. It has to be supported by the drivers of that card and by the application. All Adobe applications support, all video applications support 10-bit out. If you're going out to 10-bit, then you need to go out to a 10-bit displays and these things cost big, big money. DSLRs, strictly 8-bit. I'm not talking about the Magic Lantern stuff. Out of the box, these are 8-bit only. Um, I'm shooting on the Blackmagic Digital Cinema camera, and that is 10-bit RAW, although everything I shoot here in the studio is 8-bit ProRes. 
Um, if I had my choice, this would be the camera that I would get, either the three, C300 or the 500, which now have 10-bit, 12-bit RAW. The uh, Sony FS7, another fantastic camera, 12-bit, 16-bit RAW. And of course, the granddaddy of all RAW, that is a red camera now at the red weapon all the way up to 8K's 12-bit, 16-bit raw, unbelievable uh, choices there. So hopefully now you understand when someone says 8-bit, 32-bit, 10-bit, what's this card? What is the audio bit depth? All of those things, you have a better understanding. All right. Thanks to everyone for your wonderful support here on Video Revealed. If you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. And if you want to take it to the next level, please support us on Patreon for as little as one little dollar per month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get you looking your best.